In the event of a crisis, NATO must quickly assemble and deploy forces to defend its allies by whatever means necessary, land, sea, or air. But pulling off this logistical feat requires practice. NATO allies conduct a wide range of exercises to test their ability to rapidly deploy troops directly into combat. Welcome to another episode of High Technology. Join the club as we unravel high-end technologies on the planet by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any exciting videos in the future. In this video, let's Let's see how NATO deploys troops and why they have to do it rapidly. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO is an international military alliance of 30 members, countries from North America and Europe. As part of its deterrence and defense posture, NATO maintains a military presence in the eastern part of its territory. This includes the deployment of multinational battle groups in several Eastern European countries, namely Bulgaria, Estonia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Romania, and Slovakia as well as the deployment of additional ships, planes, and troops to the region. In response to Russia's intervention in Ukraine, NATO recently announced the deployment of its response force, a rapid reaction multinational crisis response and defense force that is capable of addressing a range of situations. The force is commanded by the Supreme Allied Commander in Europe and consists of 40,000 troops from NATO member countries who contribute on a rotational basis. The response forces flexibility and capacity to act rapidly in a variety of situations is its main advantage. The force was activated as Moscow issued warnings to Finland and Sweden against joining NATO, saying that such a move would have severe military political ramifications. Before Moscow issued these threats, the Western nations had already started relocating their soldiers and military hardware. Sweden and Finland are both members of the European Union or EU, which has a similar mutual defense provision even though it's not a member of NATO. The other EU nations will use all available means to defend the invaded nation, a crucial component of NATO's bolstered deterrent and defense posture which has been improved in recent years to match the changing security reality in the Euro-Atlantic region, is the military presence of the alliance in its eastern region. The security landscape in Europe has been profoundly altered by Russia's unlawful and illegitimate annexation of Crimea and full-fledged invasion of Ukraine. In response, NATO has greatly increased its readiness to protect and defend all allies. The deployment of allied forces is defensive, proportionate, open, and consistent with the alliance obligations under international law. It is a concrete reminder that an attack on one NATO ally is an attack on all allies and it shows a major commitment by allies. The eight multinational battle groups that make up NATO's forward presence are provided on a voluntary, completely sustainable, and rotating basis by the framework countries and other contributing allies. The combat groups are always present in the host nations and work in tandem with the local home defense forces. The size and makeup of the battle groups vary. They are adapted to certain regional conditions and threats. Overall, the makeup of each battle group is dictated by military necessities. Today, the service, training, and exercise of troops and personnel from all allies shows the strength of the alliance's solidarity and unity. Forces from contributing nations rotate in and out of the battle groups at any given time. They may be stationed in their home countries with the capability of fast deploying, if necessary, or deployed to the battle groups. The multinational corps Northeast headquarters in Szczecin, Poland is in charge of NATO's four northeastern battle groups, which are located in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland. The training and planning efforts of two division-level headquarters are coordinated for each battle group. Since December 2018, the multinational division Northeast headquarters in El Blag, Poland has been fully operational. Working closely with the battle groups in Poland and Lithuania is is this headquarters. NATO launched a supplemental multinational division North headquarters in October 2020 and is working toward being fully operational. While the majority of its offices are in Karup, Denmark, its forward components are situated in Adazi, Latvia. This HQ maintains tight ties with the battle groups in Latvia and Estonia. The establishment and integration of the four new battle groups in Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania, and Slovakia into the NATO command structure is now ongoing. Many national initiatives implemented by allies also contribute to enhance allied action in the eastern half of the alliance, despite not being formally a part of NATO's forward presence. NATO's rapid reinforcement strategy ensures that forward presence for 
forces will be reinforced by NATO's Very High Readiness Joint Task Force or VJTF. The broader NATO Response Force allies additional high readiness forces and NATO's heavier follow-on forces if necessary. At the 2022 NATO Summit in Madrid, allies agreed a new NATO force model, which represents a broader expansion of high readiness forces potentially available to NATO where and when required. The details of the NATO force model including its precise scale and composition continue to be developed. The transition to the new model is planned to be completed in 2023. The allies have agreed to enhance NATO's ability to reinforce its forces in the east by implementing a number of measures. These include the development of more pre-positioned equipment and weapon stockpiles as well as the development of additional integrated air and missile defense systems. In addition, the allies have agreed to strengthen command and control and upgrade defense plans with specific forces being pre-assigned to the defense of individual member countries. This will enable NATO to better respond to potential threats and defend its eastern flank. In order to reinforce their allies even faster, these pre-assigned soldiers will collaborate with existing forces, including both domestic home defense forces and allied forward presence forces and get familiar with the local topography, infrastructure, and pre-positioned supplies. NATO has increased its military presence in the eastern part of the alliance as a direct result of Russia's behavior which reflects a pattern of aggressive actions against its neighbors and the wider transatlantic community. Russia is the most significant indirect threat to ally security and to peace and stability in the Euro-Atlantic area. Allies agreed at the NATO summit in Wales in September 2014 to implement the Readiness Action Plan or RAP in order to respond swiftly to the fundamental changes in the security environment on NATO's borders and further afield. NATO opted to strengthen its presence in the region to further enhance situational awareness in reaction to Russia's action in the Black Sea region in November 2018. Additionally, allies increased training and drills for coast guards and marine forces as well as port visits to support Georgia and Ukraine. The the Allies have committed more ships, planes, and troops to NATO territory in Eastern and Southern Europe in response to Russia's aggressive and unlawful invasion in February 2022, strengthening the Alliance's deterrence and military posture. The NATO Response Force's highest readiness component has for the first time been employed to Romania along with thousands of additional soldiers to the Alliance battle groups, fighter jets to support NATO air policing missions, strengthen naval forces in the Baltic and Mediterranean seas, and increase troop readiness. NATO NATO's forward presence demonstrates the alliance solidarity, determination, and ability to act immediately in response to any aggression. Training and exercises in support of NATO's forward presence give allied forces experience working together resulting in enhanced readiness and interoperability. New dangers and difficulties are continually arising and the security climate in the Euro-Atlantic region is still changing. The alliance adjusts and plans in accordance with the security environment and its forward presence will continue for as long as necessary. The Alliance will keep working to maintain a credible, consistent, and resilient posture. All NATO actions are defensive, reasonable, and in line with international agreements and they always will be. With this, the transparency that has distinguished the Alliance forward presence from its creation will continue. What move will NATO make by the year 2023? Time will only tell. What are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comment section down below. That's a wrap for now. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can always get to watch more incredible videos like this. This has been High Technology serving you the best in cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. Until then, see you!